Hey YouTube comic community, it's Jimmy the Geek Aficionado and welcome back to another episode of The Dealer Room. As we've shown in the past, I do a number of conventions in my area and one of the things that I like to do is talk about uh, the interactions and the interplay with the different dealers and the kind of deals that we're able to make uh, and one of the importance of being a dealer and getting access to deals and uh, early access to books that uh, most people don't get. Uh, once they, they get in there and they're hard targeting on those those price tags. This time we were in New Berlin, Wisconsin at uh, the New Berlin Ale House, which is a combination uh, bowling alley uh, with a with a pub and a meeting center. And we do the shows in the meeting center. Uh, and this time we had a new dealer. Uh, one that we hadn't seen before. He brought some toys, he brought some comics, and I made some purchases because I am a big fan of the work of Eric Basaldua, also known as Eboss, and he does some of these great covers uh, like we see here for Grim Fairy Tales. Uh, you can tell which ones are his because he has a he has a tendency to tattoo his name on a girl's thigh. So uh, an incredible artist with a real sense of the female form. Absolutely love his work and finding him when I can. Found that one. Uh, found this one here. This is 1001 Arabian Nights, The Adventures of Sinbad. This is a sketch cover variant for that one. Uh, and an interesting option because uh, he didn't have a thigh to put his name on, so he had to put it over here uh, in, the, uh, in the smoke. Uh, because her thigh here is obviously covered up by that giant scimitar. But a cool book nonetheless. Uh, and these are always some fun ones. Uh, some of these uh, some of these Zenoscope books that they do for the conventions, uh, they, they have a tendency to do some sports ones when they do a convention in a different city. This one was for WonderCon, which is in L.A. Uh, so this is a, a, a Dodgers shot. Uh, and uh, again, we've got our, our E-Boss tattoo right there. Uh, right on her leg. Sorry about the Mylar glare. But uh, a beautiful cover nonetheless. Uh, I just, I enjoy his work. Did find a couple of Wonder Womans that I needed. This is a sensational double-sized issue of Wonder Woman, Volume 2, Number 200. Needed, a, needed that one. Uh, and as well, I needed this one here. This is issue number 329 with a Crisis crossover. This is from Volume 1. So anytime I can find Wonder Woman comics, Especially for a good price, I will pick them up because they are not easy to come by. As uh, as my friend Ryan Magic Lasso would be uh, would be supporting me on that. But this was the book that I that caught my eye. I was walking by, saw it, saw it, it had a really good price tag on it. Especially for as sharp as it is, this is one that everybody loves. This nice uh, black cover, black cat cover. Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man number ninety. It's just a super clean copy of this. So. Thought I'd pick up one because it was there and it had a good price tag. Now, let's get into the trades, right? Because that is one of the important parts of actually going to these shows for me. I traded uh, one of the dealers a book. He, he saw a book that I had that he wanted. And uh, I was like, okay, let me go and take a look at what you got. And let's see what we can figure out. So he got, uh, he got something from me and I got a stack full of things from him. Uh, starting off with... Uh, G.I. Joe number 13, trying to finish off my G.I. Joe run, uh, especially the early, the early portion of it, right? The first, like, 75 issues. That's really what I'm interested in, right? It's the stuff that was more tuned to the television show. And this was the first comic book that I ever read, right? Because I was a fan of G.I. Joe's when I was, uh, you know, like, 8, 9, 10 years old. So happy to have that. Got that one. Got this one here, a nice Destro cover. This is issue number 31. Uh, trying to get these in, you know, nice or high grade. Uh, and uh, issue number 38 with Destro and Storm Shadow on it. Very cool books, but those were just kind of the filler to, to you know, even up the deal. The real good ones to come after was this. Convergence number two, Superman. This is the birth of Jonathan Kent, the current Superman in DC Comics. So a very cool key. Happy to get that. It's a nice 9-4 copy. This is a this is a has become a big book. I don't know why. 
but it's become a big book. I think Monica Rambeau changed her name in here again, but more importantly, I think this is uh, when um, Elsa Bloodstone goes redhead or something like that. Anyway, Next Wave, Agents of Hate, issue number one, uh, a big deal about this. This one's like a, a 9698 candidate. So we'll be looking to send that one in. Got a little bit of, it's got a little bit of, I want to say it's rub, but as you can see, there's a little bit of smudge there along the line. So we'll be looking to clean that up and getting it pressed to, uh, to send to CGC. This next one's a little bittersweet. Uh, and I say that because it's, uh, it's a book I love from creators that I love. And unfortunately we lost one of them this year. Uh, and that is Batman, the long Halloween issue. Number one, this is the first appearance of Carmine Falcone. Uh, or is it Roman Maroney? I don't remember which one. Uh, one of the two big crime bosses, but uh, done by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. We lost Tim Sale this year, just freakishly. Uh, nobody understands it, but, but we did lose him. Huge loss to the industry. Such an incredible artist uh, who, who created some of the, 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 the great works that we love. Uh, he will be sorely missed. This is, uh, I want to say this is like a 9.6. It does have this, little spine tick right here, and it's a, it's a square bound book, so I'm not getting that out, uh, but it is slightly color breaking. So it's at least a, a, a decent uh, copy. Uh, maybe we'll slab it, maybe we won't, it just depends on what the return on uh, the value is, uh, specifically for that book, but happy to have a nice copy of it, uh, even if it doesn't hit 9.8, but uh, we'll see where that goes. Again, bittersweet uh, getting that, and then uh, unfortunately losing Tim Sale this year was, uh, was definitely rough. Uh, the last book that I got in this trade, as you can imagine, I, I did trade a, you know, a, a decent book uh, for this. Uh, and this is uh, Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane, number 70. This is the first Silver Age appearance of Catwoman. And it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's got some dirt, right? And, um, the I believe the centerfold is detached at one staple, so we got to get it cleaned up, pressed, get that uh, that centerfold reattached, uh, and send it in. I think it's probably about a five five, so should get a decent price. Uh, so happy to have that book and uh, and looking forward to sending that in, getting that uh, getting that squared away. Now the last deal, last deal is with a with a dealer that I work with quite often, uh, and one of the reasons is is because he gets all these wonderful Fawcett comics. Uh, so this trade was for a for these books uh, and a uh, an amazing Spider-Man 41 from me. So uh, so I think I think we came out ahead um, because these are pretty rare books. Uh, this is Mary Marvel number 27, uh, a really super nice copy, right? A little bit of cover, a little bit of wear. It's got a spine roll to, to, to fix, but uh, these are going in the PC, so not uh, not worried about having to resell these or not. But uh, nice Mary Marvel number 27. Going after this Mary Marvel collection because um, it's only like 30-something issues. Uh, and we also got Mary Marvel number 11. Again, just, you know, nice, structurally sound book, great colors, really vibrant. Happy to have gotten this. It, it was a bigger deal going on, but uh, we, we wound up settling on this. Uh, so I'm happy to get those issues from my collection uh, and happy to get these other books that I can uh, turn around and make some money on. So thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking play on this. I hope uh, this was enlightening for you uh, to some degree and the, uh, the different types of deals that can be made as a dealer working in the dealer room. Thank you for clicking play on the video. Please be sure to click the subscribe button and ring that notification bell to get notified when I release content like this. And please feel free to leave a comment down below and let's mix it up. Let's have a conversation. Thanks again and stay classy YouTube.